All right, I'm welcome back for another episode of Gone Over Trades. Today is Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on conovertrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into it here. So um, kind of a gap up this morning. Um, CPI, basically pretty much a nothing burger, right? So um, came in, the market basically got its Goldilocks number, and we had a little bit of a minor rally in the morning and that got faded pretty good here so markets just with this kind of gap very unhealthy here and very unhealthy price action we are coming off the lows here um, a little bit in the afternoon after this pretty good fade that almost took us negative i think the dow actually did go negative yeah it just went negative barely um at one point around three o'clock and we are off the lows now but not great price action um the market basically got everything it's everything it wanted right it wanted the goldilocks number and that's exactly what it got you know it was right in line with expectations and we're just not able to hold the gains here additionally if you take a look here um our head and shoulder neckline and the 200 ma and basically the 100 ma for that matter was back tested and we did back off of that level we're basically finishing with a doji um, so just not terribly good price action, you know, really overall. Um, again, yesterday we said we, we said we want to see a V shape off of this and we didn't see that. Um, more of a, I mean, we finished negative. Yes, we did save the low from, from uh, last week, but looking intraday here, you know, we kind of V shaped here, but we backed off pretty early and we closed, you know, below that pivot. It's just not really, for, for a V-shape, you want to see it really rally up into like 132 o'clock before cooling off and then closing near the highs of the day. We didn't see that yesterday. Um, and then today, kind of just no follow through uh, for the bulls. So um, again, just a doji there on the on the daily time frame. That doesn't mean we can't trade up a little bit more. I still think um, personally that the VIX does need to come in a little bit more. Um, although it did, you know, come in nicely today down 9%. I still think it wants to go a little bit lower here. And I think that the hedges um, that are definitely out there right now have to get shaken out if this market's going to make a new low. Um, but again, it is OPEX week. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of whipsaw as as expected. I'm seeing lots of levels um, get very close. I'm like, take a look at the book map here. I don't know if it's still there, but um, yeah, we got really close to 3,900. There was a pretty good order there not that long ago. We got about a couple points within it, and then it you know, it went back up. I'm seeing lots of action like that where orders are getting very close to filled and then not getting filled. It's typical OPEX week type stuff here. Um, but overall, you know, market's getting a bounce here, and you know, we'll just kind of leave it at that here, seeing a little bit of a squeeze here into the uh, final 10 minutes. But overall, just really kind of a doji type day. And, uh, you know, equal buyers to sellers. And, you know, so far it's just a bounce. Um, we do have some more data. We have PPI tomorrow. That's probably not going to be very market moving. Um, if CPI wasn't, I doubt PPI will be. Um, it usually generally isn't anyway. And then we also have, um, I think we have some jobs. I think jobless claims on Thursday, um, if I'm not mistaken, it is jobs data. And then, of course, FOMC next week. My guess is we're more sideways uh, than anything here. Uh, for the remainder of the week, you know, we could test lower prices tomorrow, then maybe we're back up uh, Thursday or vice versa. And I think for the most part, we generally close um, flattish here. Um, you see the weekly, you know, we're getting a little bit of a bounce there and we're back testing this area. So again, it does look like consolidation. But to me, um, I think for the bears, this is not terrible price action. You want to see just chop. You want to see kind of a, a bounce with no follow through that type of movement. And that's kind of what we're seeing, but we need to see, I think, more of a shakeout if the market is going to continue lower here. Uh, but overall, not a whole lot to say here. It was a day where we just kind of gapped up and then fell here. The Russell still showing some weakness um, and really not participating much in this rally. So again, we see we just saw that price action there on the spiders, um, which was a doji. And, you know, we're not anywhere near a doji here. This is much lower than where we opened. So again, the Russell continues to be a laggard um, and the banks. You know, if we, you know, obviously that's the focal point here today. KRE up two percent, but it did gap up eight percent this morning and fading pretty high off or pretty pretty hard off the highs. You know, if this stabilizes more, it's probably going to be a tailwind, um, obviously. But again, still not seeing great price action there. XLF, same thing. You know, it's up two percent, but again, did fade pretty sharply off the highs. You are holding this uh, this previous trend line there, so that is a small positive. But again, for the bears here, I think they're they're generally in control and. 
it, it just I don't really see any fear right now from the shorts. Like we're not seeing any like major short covering. Yeah, we're getting a pop here at the end of the day, but it's not like um, you know if this were if the shorts were really covering, we would have seen a lower high and we would have you know punched right through three ninety five there on the spiders, and we probably would have been able to reclaim that two hundred moving average. But I'm not really seeing that right now. I do think that's it's possible we do get another type of shakeout though. Um, possibly later in the week, like I said. But anyways, let's get over to the queues here, up two and a quarter. So a decent move there. Actually coming off, you know, we did have that. We did get rejected at that 20 moving average um, again today, but now getting back above that. So maybe the queues, you know, can get up to, you know, this red bar, you know, right at that 300, 300 level, the red bar high there. Definitely can't rule that out. And they have been the strongest, you know, of the four indices lately. Again, remember a lot of the losses, a lot of the selling, uh, for this year has been pulled forward last year. So tech was the biggest or, you know, biggest underperformer uh, last year. And now it's kind of a lot of that downside is somewhat priced into a degree. It doesn't mean it won't go lower if the market goes lower, um, but still seeing some relative strength there out of the queues. Um, Dow here, again, kind of looks a lot more like the spiders here. Big long-legged doji there on the daily and still below that 200 moving average so again if this goes sideways this could be setting up another bear base but for right now you know again just a doji finish day we're getting a bounce off the lows and we'll just leave it at that all right over to the semis so the semis faded nicely off the highs and then came you know coming back coming right back there look at the cues here it's a nice squeeze up there as we close there's the closing bell so closing right near the highs of the day Look at Apple there. So 150 all the way up to 152.50 in about 45, 50 minutes there. So nice little pop there off the lows for the queues. Um, definitely a much better look than it was even just 10 minutes ago. Um, so there's Tesla there up 5% as well, getting a nice bid. Let's take a look at Tesla. Yeah, Tesla closing near the highs of the day. That probably wants to get up to one, uh, 190 there. Um, NVIDIA, nice save there as well. That was in danger here. Take a look. It was very close to that lower rising wedge trend line, but you know, potentially lower highs here on the daily as well. Although, you know, one more, one more pop in here. Oh, I'm gonna mess up my line. <laughs> one more pop could get you up into that, um, that 250 area, 255. There is that 618. I know everybody, you know, it's the worst kept secret at this point, but it could get up to, could get up into that area. You do have some more room. Um, I think that would be probably a blow off move but um either way semis nice little pop there off of the lows and um yeah closing back above that 20 moving average i don't see a ton more upside though um again maybe a new nominal high um you know just a crack above 250 but that's about it there on the smh uh, igv nice bounce as well also up two and a quarter that is below the 20 moving average though um so still a little bit of weakness and again remember that failed pattern on the weekly should give us a lower high so just be careful of that uh transports definitely on the weaker side here they did come way off the lows here in the last 40 minutes um but not a really good looking candle here we save the 200 moving average we do have a lower low in play and again looking at yesterday we closed below friday's low and um you know we did that again today so after rallying up and basically getting rejected this morning um, we gapped up and then kind of rolled over and never really recovered so transports on the weaker side, look at the Jets here. Um, full disclosure, I do have this short, by the way, um, already in the money pretty nicely on this. So not, not of much consequence if it does bounce here. But um, either way, um, Jets very weak, you know, basically getting close to that 200 moving average. There's a lot of support around uh, 18. But again, kind of dragging that DJT down. There should be a lot of support down here around 13.5, 13.6 if we can get there. Um, and then, of course, 13.5 will be a lot more. But transport's definitely uh, leading to the downside here, so not a good sign for the markets. Anyways, um, let's get over to rates here. So uh, let's look at the two-year first. So ZT, pretty good. I mean, huge move yesterday and then backing way off of that 200 moving average there, but a huge power up move off the lows. Let's take a look at the yield curves here. And by the way, Bitcoin came way off the highs as I'm flipping over to TradingView here. And then got a nice bounce with everything else there in the final minutes. Definitely OPEX, a lot of whipsaw here. Definitely OPEX type action. But take a look at the uh, yield curve. Twos and tens backing off that 200 moving average. Again, looks a lot like the two year right now. And then three month and 10 year getting a bid here. And the reason I'm pulling these up here um, is because this move off the lows, if this continues, it's going to signal that the recession is here, which is a big game changer for a lot of things. And it's going to change how 
the market as a whole trades here. But um, ZT coming in off the highs, obviously, but a huge move. If this continues sideways and pushes up, um, then it's recession on. So um, that's where the 10 year is as well, down 86 basis points today, but still, you know, having a nice power move. And then there's the 30 year. Again, all these hitting their 200 moving average. The one thing I will say, though, is ZB did make a slight higher high yesterday. So, you know, it's definitely a little bit of a change of character there. Uh, so we'll continue to watch these very closely moving forward. Um, but again, yields uh, backing off, or I should say yields getting a bounce and bonds backing off a little bit here. But we'll be watching these for pattern here. Anyways, um, let's get over to housing. So XHB. Again, dead cap bounce there yesterday. And, you know, we closed, you know, decently higher here, still below that 50 moving average. So that area, that 50 MA kind of coincides kind of with that 200 MA sort of on the spiders there. So kind of backing off that level. Um, but either way, you know, getting a little bit of a bounce here. We did have that failed pattern on the weekly as well. So just be aware of that same pattern there on the ITB. And then VNQ getting a bid here off of that pivot. We talked about that as being good support. It got down there yesterday and we got a nice bounce off that. So we'll see. It probably wants to go retest 85 here. Um, we'll look for that area possibly tomorrow and maybe even the next day. Um, again, XLF, we already briefly touched on up 2%. You know, almost closed above yesterday's high. That would have been a good a good sign of strength there. Didn't quite get there today, but definitely a good bounce. Again, if this can stabilize, it will be a tailwind for the market. Again, we'll watch that 200 MA. 34 should be really good resistance there um, if it's tested here in the short term. Let's get KRE one more time. Yeah, pretty good fade. I mean, you know, we gapped up and it just faded all day long, really. So um, not the greatest looking candle. Uh it's probably due for a bounce. It does look like some of these issues are starting to get sorted out, um, at least in the near term. Um, but, you know, obviously a monumental collapse there, you know, 58, 59 bucks all the way down to 42 and what, like five, six days there. So amazing move there to the downside. The KBE, same thing. That closed uh, well within yesterday's highs as well. Um, all right, over to uh, broker dealers here. Lastly, again, reclaiming that 200 moving average. Again, lots of support in this area. Oversold, but nice rising wedge break. Um, not sure what this one wants to do here, but it has been strong really all year. But I mean, needless to say, big, big breakdown here. If we go back up 470 will be resistance. If not, and it goes sideways, it could set up a bear base. All right, over to crude here. So our level just broke on crude. So I'm watching this into the end of the week. But um, personally, I'm not jumping on this short right now. This is a weekly level. So it needs to if we're below this by the end of the week, then I'm pretty confident crude's going to 50 to $60. Um, but I've seen this enough times where daily chart level fails and then the weekly, or, you know, I should say the daily chart level fails and the next day or the next two days later, um, they rip your head off and you get an engulfing reversal. I'm not going to be a victim of that because I've had been a victim of that in, in the past. And that's why we go off the weekly chart a lot of the time. So there's your weekly level. They could easily close that back above it by Friday. It was three more days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, if we're below that, though, by the end of the week, that's a failure, and that is going a lot lower. So we'll watch that. Um, I'm watching that like a hawk. But for right now, um, yeah, crude below that area, and it's getting a little bit of a bounce here in the after hours. Nothing crazy, but yes, I will be watching that. XLE also getting a bit of rejection at the 200 moving average here, so a little bit of a soft spot there on XLE. And remember, we're starting to see some weakness here. You got one, two, three lower highs, four lower highs, if you want to count that one on the XLE. So this one's starting to look like it's running out of gas here. XOP, um, another kind of doji here. Again, we talked about this one, two, three, four lower highs there. Um, and that kind of wedge pattern. We'll just kind of draw it in there. So that kind of wedge ish type look is starting to break to the downside there on the XOP and OIH also getting a dead cap bounce at 280. We said that would be support. That's where it's stalling out right now. Um, we'll see. Maybe it wants to go back test 300 over the next couple of days to weeks. If this bre level breaks, you're going to 250. All right, net gas, a um, little bit of a pause day here. Um, had a little bit of a bid into the right after the COMEX close. It held the 20 moving average, though. I do like what I'm seeing here on the four hour, though. So you have a bullish inside bar. If this consolidates a little bit further, this can go up. Um, we'll continue to watch that one, but I do think the bottom is in and possibly the secondary higher low is in as well. Anyways, dollar index still holding that 50 MA, basically finished flat here on the day, right into this support level. We'll see what it does over the next couple of days. 
I'm not really sure what it wants to do, but um, it's holding that level. So we'll just leave it at that right now. Um, it is OPEX week too, and we are down into it. So a lot of the time when you're down the first two days of OPEX week, sometimes you can rally back up. Um, but this support level is pretty good. It should hold right now. Um, I don't really see any reason why the dollar is going to go lower, but you do have an inverted hammer after a sell bar. So short term, this could put in a pattern here and I'm looking at gold right now. But I want to I actually want to look at silver a little bit more because you have kind of like an up move and then an inside hammer. So if this goes sideways, this can go higher. So that would be kind of your bearish dollar kind of setup here. The only thing is with right now, the way I'm looking at it is it's, it's like that algo that is selling the dollar when yields go down um, is still in play which is, we've talked about this the last couple of days, that's kind of strange because the dollar should be a fear play right now as the VIX is definitely acting like a fear play for the, for the first time in a while. And bonds are acting like a fear play for the first time in a while. So the dollar's not quite there yet. It's still behaving in that like inflation trade kind of, kind of setup. So a little strange, but I do think that does change um, at some point. And, and even gold is acting as a fear trade, right? So we talked about that yesterday. Um, and, and Bitcoin to an extent, you know, with the with the banks. Um, but we'll watch it again. I do like that level for the dollar. So we'll see what happens. Um, gold, you know, just a little inside day there. Nothing terrible. Again, if it goes sideways, um, it can get up to 1962. Um, and that's about where I that's kind of like max move right now. But um, we'll have to watch that over the next couple of weeks because it could turn into something else. Um, silver here again, inside hammer. If it consolidates, it can move higher. Um, you'll have some area right around 2260. There's going to be good resistance there. Uh, platinum, again, inside day, backed off to 50 MA, no confirmation above it. This is pretty good resistance here. We'll see what it does. Um, you know, if it backs off and say 950, 960 would be support here. But then, you know, you got to watch that green bar low. If you close below that, um, then it's going to be another leg down for platinum. Copper here, inside day, nothing to add. We had a little bit of a false breakdown yesterday. I'm still in the bear camp, though, on copper. It might just need to back off a little, or it might just need to uh, consolidate a little bit more. All right, over to Bitcoin. So this was very interesting. Look how far off the highs it came here. So we made a new high, a new high all the way going back to, I think, yeah, like almost almost 52-week highs, basically, you know, June, um, all the way up to 26.379. I noticed how yesterday they saved that, you know, they save that green bar low. And of course, what happens? Big pop there. Um, we'll see if it can get up into that upper trend line here, but it came way off the highs. Let's take a look at the intraday. So look at this. So this is a 15 minute one, two, three up consolidation. And then it came really sharply off the highs. Then just like everything else, they saved it in the last half hour or so. Um, so not a terrible looking daily candle there, but we are going to, you know, it looks like we're going to close. I know Bitcoin closes at 8 p.m., so who knows? Bitcoin moves 5% in a minute like it's nothing. So who knows? Maybe we close back below this pivot, which we are below it now, um, which would indicate a lot of supply is still up there, which we know. I mean, right? Like everybody who bought up here is holding bags, and they've been holding bags for a while. So they're going to turn into sellers generally. But, you know, if you get your footing, nothing to say we can't go up there into this trend line. And it's kind of, it's almost like serendipitous, right? Like you've got that trend line. It's up sloping. So let's say we were to consolidate and push up, that would take you right into this major, major resistance level at 28,000. So you'd have that, you'd have like two areas of major resistance there um, as this trend line upslopes into that area. And you know, again, this is just hypothetical, but um, fun to look at there. And again, they saved that weekly pattern. So we'll give it the upside bias for now. All right, back over to the spiders here. So again, lastly, basically kind of a doji look they did pump it up a little bit in the last 15 minutes there um again i think we need to consolidate more possibly a lot more whipsaw um if we're gonna make another leg lower there's just too many hedges out there right now uh, for the market to really have significant downside if you ask me if the vix comes in pretty sharply though um that could be the catalyst or the start of something else i don't think the vix is done here i think it just needs to put in a higher low and shake out a little bit this can go higher do not think it can't here um the vix usually works in a series of you know threes and fours and we've you know you could make a case you've got two pivots here um you could count this as one cluster potentially um so we'll see 
But um, I don't think this market is out of the woods. We're definitely in treacherous water right now. Don't get very confident um, in either direction. And if you're trading, keep your position sizes uh, definitely on the smaller side. Look to average in. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on counterbartrades.com. We'll talk to you all tomorrow.